audiometric patterns. A thorough knowledge of various audiometric patterns is of paramount importance in order to be able to diagnose conditions based on the pattern. Several patterns are diagnostic of the constituent illness and therefore a deep understanding of these patterns and its causation is of great import. Let us have a look at the various audiometric patterns and some of the reasons that cause it. Here we have always please remember the right ear marking is by red ink and thereby the left ear blue ink. RR please remember R right R red the red is for the right side. Now in this ear there is a flat conductive hearing loss across all frequencies and this is due to a complete occlusion of the ear canal. This could be because of a foreign body or cerumen. A complete mechanical blockage of the outer canal resulting in a flat conductive hearing loss. R red right bone conduction is better than the air conduction. The patient has a low to mid frequency conductive hearing loss due to tympanic membrane perforation. Diagnosis of conductive loss. Diagnosis is ordinarily made via observation of an airborne gap on audiometry, meaning that the hearing is superior when sound is transmitted in such a way that it bypasses the middle ear ossicular chain. The airborne gap should be at least 10 decibel for us to say that there is a conductive component. Let us have a look at various symbols. Circular for the right side. The right side is circular. Left is X. Please understand. Right, circular, X, left. The right is marked in red. For the left it is blue. When it is masked then it is a triangle for the right side. The left masked is square. Mastoid unmasked open arrow to the left. To the right mastoid unmasked. Mastoid masked is a bracket open bracket to the left. Open bracket to the right is mastoid mass. Be thorough with all these symbols. What do you mark when there is no response? This arrow is attached to right circular. No response. Left X with an arrow here. No response. Air conduction. Air conduction is by 0 and X. When there is no response by air conduction, it is an arrow here, arrow there, no conduction of no conduction on the left side. So these symbols are to be mastered. Now here we have bilateral noise induced sensorineural hearing loss. Realize that sensorineural hearing loss for noise induced usually shows a dip at 4K. There are no significant differences between air and bone conduction threshold. For a significant difference, the gap should be at least, as we earlier said, 10 decibels. The asymmetry at 3 and 4000 with the left ear worse than the right reflects this patient's occupation as a soldier in the infantry and being a right-handed shooter. 4K dip in noise-induced hearing loss. Now, we said the right is red and the circle again for the right side. The left is blue. Now, in this case, on the left ear, sensorineural hearing loss due to vestibular schwannoma. With sensorineural loss, there is no significant difference in threshold between air and bone conduction. What is the difference that should be in order to say that there is a conductive component there should be a minimum airborne gap of 10 decibels. You note here that there is no gap. 
in this audiogram we find that there is a low frequency loss why has this happened because it shows a false low frequency why because of excessive background noise in the test area now let us have a look when the background noise is addressed in a perfect soundproof room you observe here when the patient is retested in a quiet area that meets american national standards institute specifications the hearing levels are within normal limits in which condition do we get a low frequency loss we said on the right it is for the circular on the left open bracket and x there is no airborne gap in which condition do we get a low frequency hearing loss in meniere's disease this is called a cookie bite pattern if you bite a cookie then this after biting of the bit the cookie looks like this where do we get a cookie bite pattern the cookie bite audiogram is a bilateral mid frequency notch it is different from the noise notch which is generally centered at about 4k because the cookie bite occurs at a lower frequency cookie bites have also been described after carbon monoxide intoxication in patients with acoustic neuroma and wong discussed causes of cookie bites including non ocular stickler syndrome and wardenburgs which are autosomal dominant also u shaped audiograms are occasionally seen i repeat again u shaped audiograms are occasionally seen in mutations of connexin 26 this is a cookie bite audiometric pattern the cookie bite hearing loss old age presbya cases in presbya cases the hearing loss is high frequency it looks like a ski slope and therefore called a ski slope hearing loss again we said right is red in this case they have marked the left in green usually it is to be marked in blue and a high frequency hearing loss both on the right and the left side as a ski slope pattern in presbya cases now we also should have a detailed in depth knowledge about the range when we say it is normal we talk of a range of minus 10 to plus 15 please note specifically 16 to 25 is slight and master this chart 16 to 25 is slight 26 to 40 is mild 41 to 55 is moderate 56 to 70 is moderately severe 71 to 90 severe and beyond 91 is profound this is the speech banana what do you mean by the speech banana a knowledge about this is necessary in treating with hearing aids cochlear implants and addressing social issues what is the speech banana this is the speech banana when the sounds of speech of phonemes of all known human languages are plotted on an audiogram they cluster in a banana shaped region known as the speech banana they cluster in a banana shaped region and this they cluster in a banana shaped region and this is called the speech banana people with normal hearing acuity can also hear sounds outside of the speech banana these sounds include ambient natural sounds such as a rustling of leaves in the winds or birds chirping artificial sounds outside of the speech banana can include music and mechanical noises audiologists are primarily concerned with hearing loss that occurs within the speech banana why because it can slow the development of a child's language and speech abilities 
and this in turn can profoundly interfere with learning. Hearing loss within the speech banana can also hinder communication capabilities in adults as in elderly speech will people with age related hearing loss. This again I repeat is the speech banana in within which all known human language phonemes come within. It is only when the speech banana is affected that speech understanding becomes difficult for all humans on earth. These are the various audiometric patterns that you will encounter. To understand and say that there is a conductive component, the gap between air and bone should be not less than 10 decibels. We said the right ear is red, left ear is blue, right is circular, left is cross. This is a normal hearing audiogram. When there is a mild conductive loss on the right side, circular is right. When it has come down, this is a mild conductive loss. The left ear, as you see, left is X, is normal. The gap between air and conduction in the left is less than 10 decibels. This looks like a ski slope and therefore a ski slope loss and it is especially affecting the high frequencies in presbyacusis. When there is a dip at 4k, this is in noise induced hearing loss. Congenital hearing loss manifests like this and we do not know why sometimes people lose their hearing, idiopathic hearing loss. Carhartt's notch. The Carhartt notch is a depression in the bone conduction audiogram of patients with clinical autosclerosis. The middle frequencies from 0.5 to 2 kilohertz, which corresponds to the resonance frequency of the middle ear, can be substantially improved by stapes surgery. A dip at 2k is called the Carhartt's notch. Repeat again, in 4k, it is noise induced hearing loss. 2k autosclerotic Carhartt's notch. Why does a Carhartt notch appear at 2000 Hz? An audiometric finding characteristic of autosclerosis is an increase in bone conduction threshold with a peak at 2000 Hz called the Carhartt's notch and this Carhartt published in 1950. Although the notch occurs at 2000 Hz, a reduction in bone conduction sensitivity is seen from 500 to 4000. But on average, 5 decibel at 500, 10 at 1000, 15 at 2000 and 5 dB at 4000. So the maximum loss of 15 decibel is found to be at 2000 Hertz and this is classic in autosclerosis. Carhartt attributed this phenomenon to mechanical factors associated with stepidal fixation. The Carhartt notch is not a true indication of cochlear reserve and this apparent bone conduction loss may be corrected by surgical intervention and so said Tondorf in 1971 and Carhartt and Tondorf provided a review of several theories to explain this phenomenon. This is 2000 and that shows a dip at 4k. The left is blue, the X is air and this is bone. Tondorf explained that the middle ear contribution to total bone conduction response consists of an ossicular inertial component and a middle ear effect. He found the magnitude of the Carhartt notch dependent on the extent the middle ear contributed to the total bone conduction response in each of the species tested. Further, Tondorf explained the frequency of notch de varied depending on the resonant frequency of the ossicular chain of bone conducted signals. The resonant frequency of ossicular chain was at a relatively high frequency compared with other species. Among the species studied, this frequency was lowest in cats and highest in rats and based on the work of Tondorf, it appears the Carhartt notch peaks at 2000 Hz due to the loss of the middle ear component close to the resonant point of the ossicular chain words that postgraduates went by heart. Why is the Carhartt notch at 2000 Hertz? Because it is it is due to the loss of middle ear component close to the resonance point of the ossicular chain. 
the explanation for the Carhartt's notch at 2000 Hertz. This is the notch at 2000 Hertz. Heart disease and audiometric patterns. Cardiovascular disease risk factors can affect hearing by decreasing vascularization of the peripheral and central auditory system. What is cardiovascular disease primarily vascular compromise and if the tiny vessels in the heart can be compromised, the vascular supply of the inner ear also could be compromised in the same way and therefore the cochlea is highly vascularized organ specifically in the striavascularis. Noise induced hearing loss is caused by destruction of the hair cells in the basal segment of the cochlea whereas a decreased blood supply affects the maintenance of adequate endolymphatic potentials of the cochlea specifically in the apex corresponding to the hair still stimulation at low frequencies. So therefore patients with cardiovascular disease or impending cardiovascular will have a low frequency loss. Presby acuses and high frequency loss. Pure tone audiograms usually measures hearing threshold from 125 to 8000 hertz. What is the pattern in high frequency hearing loss or presbyocus we studied earlier is a ski slope to the right which means they will have a high frequency loss. However, human hearing ranges from 20 to 20,000 hertz. It is possible that hearing loss in the range of 8000 to 20000 hertz which we which we usually do not test is not picked up with during contemporary routine audiometry because most machines do not have this capacity the availability of a high frequency pta machine producing pure tones of up to 16000 hertz enables us to detect high frequencies at a much earlier age so although we say it is presbyacusis it usually starts at a much earlier age and can be detected if we assess hearing between 8 to 20,000 hertz. Why do we see a 4K dip in noise induced deafness? As the middle ear's main function is to match the impedance of outer inner ear, the system is a low pass filter with a cutoff at around 1200 hertz. So it tends to attenuate high frequencies above 4000 kilohertz. This is also why the sound detection at higher frequencies tend to be much worse than at lower frequencies. Another explanation for the notch at 4k in noise induced deafness is that the external auditory canal of the ear is a tube that is closed at one end by the tympanic membrane. The acoustic resonance properties of the external canal can be described in a particular equation. Now, the length of the external auditory canal is approximately 25 millimeters long. So, according to the equation, the average resonance is around 3200 hertz. Thus, the resonant characteristics of the external canal help determine the acoustic energy delivered to the cochlea. For example, industrial noise typically has a broad spectrum. However, as it travels through the external canal, acoustic energy in the mid frequency range resonates or is amplified creating a band pass noise centered at around 3200 hertz hence it is typical to see a 4k notch in audiograms of patients with noise induced hearing loss which is about half octave above the middle frequency of the noise now henderson also cited various studies that have found the basal membrane vibrations show maximum displacement at half an octave above the stimulation frequency. The study found that the frequencies where noise induced hearing loss occurs and depends on the anatomy of the patient's outer ear. Since everybody's outer ear, not everybody's outer ear is 25 millimeters long, the noise induced hearing loss may vary in which frequencies are affected, which is why a little variation in the notch from 3 to 6 kilohertz is observed. But generally, in noise induced hearing loss, the dip is at 4K, whereas in autosclerosis, the dip is at 2K. This is a 4K dip in noise induced hearing loss. And that is the equation which we earlier talked about.